Hi, my name is Eero Saunamäki and I'm a professional recorder player from Helsinki, Finland. And on this video we're going to talk about the Mandalorian theme, which features the bass recorder. And I'm also going to teach you the theme and you can use any size recorder you want. And then I'll talk more about the bass recorder, the instrument itself and its usage in music. But let's begin with the theme. Uh, and at this point I assume that you have some kind of recorder and I assume that you have some knowledge about how to play the instrument, how to blow and how to articulate and how to move your fingers. Uh, and now I'm going to just teach you the notes and the rhythm of the theme. So if you're using a bass or alto recorder, the first note we are going to use is a G, which is played like this. And if you're using a soprano or tenor, then the first note is uh, named D. And the second note is played like this. So we remove all other fingers except uh, the thumb, index and middle finger of the left hand. So like this, the first two notes. And now with the real rhythm. And the next jump is a bit wider. We jump from G to F, or if you are using uh, a tenor or soprano, we jump from D to C. And to get the higher note, we have to remove all other fingers except the thumb and a middle finger from our left hand. So like this. And now with the real rhythm. So the third jump is a minor third, which should be played like this. But uh, the composer Ludwig Göransson plays the recorder himself in the recording of the Mandalorian and he uses this kind of false fingering for this interval, uh, which is a bit of out of tune, but it also gives the theme this kind of spooky feeling. So I'm also going to use uh, that fingering for it. So the same bottom note as always and then we just lift up these two fingers from the right hand and we get this interval and then with the real rhythm and the last one the same bottom note and then we lift up all the fingers of our right hand and with the right rhythm. And now the whole theme with the real rhythm. And how to get that multiphonic is that you, uh, I'm using a couple of fingers from my left hand and maybe one or two fingers from my right hand and then just blowing a bit too hard and while blowing a bit too hard I'm removing the fingers, so like this. And on the bass recorder it works wonderfully in those multiphonics. So a couple of words about the composer Ludwig Göransson or Ludwig Göransson as he's known in Hollywood. So he's this 36-year-old uh, guy from Sweden, from Linköping, and he has no recorder playing background. He's more of a guitar player and he has studied uh, guitar playing in, in Sweden in a music university and also uh, uh, film scoring in, uh, in University of Southern California in the States. And during recent years he has uh, won an Oscar from, for the music of the film Black Panther and this year he won an Emmy uh, for the music of The Mandalorian. And uh, the instrument he's using uh, in the recording of the Mandalorian theme is a plastic recorder, so like this. This is by Thoman, which is an amazing value instrument and he's using a Yamaha. Uh, which is the instrument is a bit better in quality and but costs a bit more. 
So if you're really on a tight budget then and, and interested in starting to play the bass recorder, you should buy the Thoman, I think. But then if you have a bit more euros or dollars to spend, then buy definitely the Yamaha because the, uh, it, it just the sound and everything just works a bit better. And if you really want to invest to a really, really nice instrument, then you could buy a wooden instrument. And mine is by Yamaha, but there are also many other makers and models uh, who make this uh, kind of recorder. And this is um, a Baroque model of a bass recorder. So even though I'm talking about the bass recorder uh, and people um, think that, that this is a very large recorder, but, but this is in fact the highest of the bass recorder family, so to speak. So, um, so this one we professional recorder players call a basset, a kind of little bass. Because this is a bass in F, but then we also have a bass in C. And then we have even larger bass, a contrabass in F, and then an even larger a sub contrabass in C, and then an even larger bass in F, and so on. The list goes on and on. So the, I think the tallest rec uh, bass recorder in the world is this uh, Big Babe, uh, which has a height of kind of three meters or so. So this is a, a really small bass recorder, but for the kind of kind of the uh, the common uh, people or common musicians, this is still considered as a as a low instrument because people are used to uh, think that if you mention the word recorder to them, they of course think about the school recorder, which is the soprano recorder. So how is the bass recorder used in recorder music? Well, um, the bass was a very common instrument a couple of centuries ago when they had these uh, recorder consorts. And then they play this kind of polyphonic consort music with uh, four to uh, twelve recorders in a, in the same ensemble or group, and and in this group there were many bass recorder players also. Uh, that was uh, during the Renaissance times, so the instrument looked a bit different and didn't have this much keys. So this uh, more of a baroque instrument. Uh, and the bass recorder was also used in Baroque times by, by Corelli, for example. And nowadays it's very widely used in, in contemporary music because you get this uh, amazing sound and effects out of this uh, recorder quite easily. <laughs> So the bass recorder has keys, so you don't have to stretch your fingers so much. And uh, in fact, this is, uh, I think, more comfortable to play than a tenor recorder even. Um, and there are a couple of things that you should know when playing the bass recorder. Uh, one is that you have to use this kind of slow, warm air to play the instrument and to get the, uh, the bottom notes to sound right. So like... <sighs> Because if you are uh, using too much air or, or thinking kind of too high, then, then it really doesn't work. So you really have to uh, think about like this. And on my recorder I'm playing straight to the mouthpiece. I could also use this kind of uh, hat and then this crook to play the instrument. I'm just going to attach this. Like this. But I prefer to play straight to the mouthpiece um, because I'm used to it, of course. Uh, and then uh, I think the, the instrument reacts more quickly when um, I have the control straight here to the mouthpiece. So what about the playing position? Uh, in a bass recorder you have this thumb rest right here and then you can 
Um, rest the instrument also like like this on your feet. Or you can use this kind of uh, neck strap and attach the instrument to the strap like this. But usually I don't use these uh, straps or my my uh, feet that much. Uh, I think the instrument isn't that heavy, so I'm quite comfortable in in playing the instrument just like like this. And about contemporary music on the bass recorder, well, that's really fun because the. Uh, most of the recorder effects work really well on the bass recorder. For example, the sputato tonguing, where you tongue really hard to the mouthpiece. And then the multiphonics work really well because the instrument itself is so large. And then you can also cover the labium to get more sound. And of course you can use the bass recorder for early music also. Uh, this one is now in 440, or this kind of uh, standard modern pitch. But you can also buy this another center piece which is in 415, so you can also play with a baroque playing friends. Um, you can double the bass line with this, or you can be kind of a soloist also. Uh, there's, for example, this wonderful trio by Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach, which features the bass recorder, cembalo and viola. So I think that the bass recorder is a great instrument and it's a great investment. If you're a, a recorder hobbyist and if you're a professional recorder player, you really need this instrument. Uh, you can play early music and you can play contemporary music and then you also learn how to read music uh, from a bass clef. So that's, that, that's a new thing that, that you have to learn on the bass and one thing you should also remember that, that although the music written for the bass recorder is written to the bass clef, it sounds an octave higher. So that, that's something to keep in mind. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, and if you did, please subscribe and leave uh, a thumbs up and click on the bell so you get notified when there's new content.